Yo, what is up guys, Ghost here. Welcome back to another video. Today, we are gonna be going over all of the stealth changes to update 7.0. Whether DICE intended them or not, I'm sure some of them were definitely intentional, but some of them surely were not here. As always guys, if you do enjoy the content on the channel, hit up the subscribe button down below. Lots more to come on season seven here in the future. Thank you so much for your guys' support there on the last video. A bunch of you guys subscribed. So once again, do check down below if you are subscribed and you regularly watch my vids because most of you guys are not. And as always, thank you guys for the support. Okay, so let's just jump straight into this list here. Little disclaimer, this list here is compiled by the community. So some of these things, it's not really possible to verify whether they've been changed or not because we don't have any official word from DICE. But I have tested as many of these as possible for you guys and most of them seem to be accurate. So first of all, the main battle tank's 60mm mortar pod has gotten a massive range buff and the projectile goes super, super far. So this thing used to be a bit of a pea shooter. It really didn't have any range at all. You could lob it over a wall or maybe into a building window or something like that. They've probably doubled, if not tripled, the range of it here. So if you weren't using this weapon before on the third gunner seat for the main battle tank, I really recommend doing so. It also does a bunch of damage to armoured vehicles as well, and now with the range buff, you can certainly work that into your cycle. Like if you're solo tanking, you can hit them with a cannon shot, then switch to the tow launcher and hit them with the tow, and then switch to the 60mm uh, mortar and hit them with that as well massive dps output potential there and of course it does insane splash damage to infantry as well there were also quite a lot of nice changes to the ui that dice didn't mention in the patch notes at all so you can now see the names of teammates and squad mates that you're about to spawn on really nice change there you can also see the number of passengers in a vehicle and of course we have the new spawn screen for the vehicles themselves as well as the new deployment screen icon now this next one is definitely a bug. The tank turret traverse speed has been buffed, as we all know, in the last patch, but that has unfortunately had the repercussion of introducing another bug. So the third person reticle is completely misaligned from when you switch to the first person. So if you were somebody who enjoyed tanking in first person, I would pretty much forget about that. I mean, you can use the box and you can aim with the center of that if you can guesstimate around where it is, but forget about using the crosshair altogether in third person. It is not accurate at the moment. Okay, next, the AKS-74U has gotten a brand new reload animation here. So that was nice to see. A lot of the portal weapons have had kind of janky reloads ever since they were put in the game as vault weapons. The animations didn't really match up to the length of the reload. Sometimes you would break the reload animation because the animation looked as if it was finished, but it actually wasn't. And then you'd switch back to a weapon only to realize you actually don't have any ammunition because you didn't reload. So hopefully they're going to do that for the rest of the vault weapons that need it as well. This next one I'm almost certain is a bug as well. So the transition speed for the mall hybrid site, which is available for a number of weapons, is way slower, significantly slower than it was before. This could be some sort of a balance change. Maybe they wanted to nerf the mall site and they thought it was just far too powerful being able to change between two different magnifications. I'm almost certain though that's not the case and it is just a bug. So hopefully they will be fixing that in the future because right now there is no way in hell that I would use this site the way it is. They've also made a very slight tweak here to the font and the color of the integrated ammo counter displays which are available for certain weapons on certain skins. So here you can see me using the Firelight skin for the MP9. They've changed the color from a teal color to yellow, but you also notice when you're not ADSing, the numbers are kind of hard to read. It's almost as if half of them are blocked out in some way. Some numbers are worse than others. And again, I'm sure that this is a bug and it's something to do with the fact that they've changed the font and the color here. Now, another big change that a lot of helicopter pilots have noticed is that it is significantly easier to shoot people out of the Nightbird. So shooting people, the pilot, through the glass of the Nightbird and shooting them out of the cockpit, it's obviously not possible for us to prove this, that they've changed it in any way. But if you're a pilot and you fly all the time and you're in a lot of 1v1 Nightbird battles, then you'll just feel it, right? All the time we're shooting the pilot out before we're killing the Nightbird. I'm not sure if that's intended. Maybe they wanted to make it a little bit easier to win that dogfight. Maybe you could try and aim for the head. But it just seems like the rounds are connecting with the soldier 
in the Nightbird rather than the Nightbird helicopter itself. And we all know that that has been a massive problem in Battlefield 2042 ever since launch. A lot of the time, it seems that AA missiles, when they hit the Nightbird, sometimes they will just outright kill the soldier inside of the Nightbird and knock you out of there instead of damaging the Nightbird. So it seems like this was an unintended change and uh, hopefully DICE are going to get on fixing that one there as well. I mentioned this in the last video, but they've of course removed the Condors and the Hind from the attacking team in Breakthrough. They have mentioned that that is a bug, it is unintended, and it will be coming back. And then finally here, I think this is probably the most broken thing in the game at the moment, the Avancy's LMG. <laughs> and I'm laughing here because this thing just looks so ridiculous with the Iron Sight. It does this weird, I don't even know what it is. I think it's the animation where you move between the canted iron sight and a regular optic. It's it's like that animation on steroids. Anyway, if you guys want an extra challenge playing Battlefield 2042 because you're the best infantry player ever, go and pick up the advances with the iron sight and see how well you can do with this thing. Now, I noticed in yesterday's video, I did this little segment in the test range, and a lot of you were asking me, Ghost, how do I gain access to the test range? Perhaps you're a new player. Well, there is no test range built into Battlefield 2042, but there is a community-made portal mode that you can use, and it's this one here. Here is the code. It's made by a German YouTuber called Benbit, so go and subscribe to him. Really great guy if you happen to speak German. And apologies, Ben, if you're not actually German and you're Swiss or something like that. My bad. But yeah, it does the trick. It's pretty rudimentary, pretty bare bones. It's not quite as advanced as No Name's Aim Trainer was. But for most intents and purposes, this should be the ticket. So I was super happy when I found this because I have really been missing my aim trainers. One last little update here from DICE before we end the video. I haven't really commented on this, but the other day DICE posted on their Battlefield Communication Twitter account announcing that they were going to increase the ticket numbers from 900 to 1300 on the Haven map in Conquest. So they also provided us a little graphic here demonstrating the win rates for Team 1 and Team 2. I don't know why they haven't just put USA and Russia. They've obviously hiding it from us here which faction wins more often than the other, probably to avoid us debating that. But overall, the win rates seem pretty good. 47% to 52%, almost 53% is fairly equal there. And the average match duration is 16 minutes, which I think they deem as a little bit on the short side. So they've decided to increase the tickets by 400 in order to give the losing team a chance to flip things around and maybe go on to win the game before they get absolutely steamrolled. And that is about going to do it for this one, guys. I am aware that most of these changes were probably more unintended than intended, but nevertheless, I still wanted to keep you guys in the loop, maybe clue you in as to perhaps what you shouldn't be using in the game right now, unless you want an extra challenge, of course. That is going to do it for this one, guys. Leave your thoughts down below, subscribe for more Battlefield, and I'll see you guys in the next one.